Hey everyone, welcome to my top 10 favorite cards from the Brothers War spoilers. Um, these are just going to be cards that I think are going to be my favorites because it's hard to say without actually playing them. But they're probably, I guess you could say, the cards I find the coolest or I'm most excited to play with overall. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. And first up, we have Cityscape Leveler. Uh, th these are in order, of course. So this is the 10th card I'm most excited to play. And we'll go up from there. So at number 10, Cityscape Leveler. I remember starting playing Magic in, in 2018, I think it was. And I think there was one Artifact Golem that cost 7 mana. That, that was a 3-3. And it comes into the battlefield. It comes into play and you destroy an online permanent. I remember really loving that card. And this just reminds me of, of, uh, of it. And actually, I do think this is more powerful, obviously because of the unearth and I don't know I just I, I really love the art the flavor like it's just it's just raising the city so every time it every time it moves every time it attacks you get to destroy something else uh it's just I don't know I find that like I find this card super cool I don't, I don't know if it's gonna see play in standard at least but I'll definitely try to make it work I I like the idea of like just it having unearth eight, right? You can just discard it and then later down the line, bring it back out to destroy something and deal eight damage potentially. I, I don't know. I just re I really love the card. The artwork's just fantastic. It's just, it's just I don't know. I love it. That's that's about it for that one. <laughs> Not much else more to say about it. Um, all right. At uh, number nine, we have Skyfisher Spider, which is a four mana Golgari creature. It's a three three with reach. And when it enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice another creature. And when you do, you destroy target and online permanence. And then when a Skyfisher Spider dies, you can gain one life for each creature card in your graveyard. If you do, you have to exile it from your graveyard, though. So this card is... I don't know. I just I think I, I just really like exploit effects. So exploit is a mechanic. I don't know why they didn't put exploit on this, but... Exploit is a mechanic where you sacrifice a creature as your creature enters the battlefield for the most part. And it has an additional effect. And I feel like this fits the Golgari theme really well. Like, green, black, destroy not on permanent. That kind of goes hand in hand. And I feel like for four mana in the 3-3 three, three reach stat line is just really solid. I feel like this could definitely... I don't think Golgari is that viable in standard. But I'm sure you could build like some kind of like mid-rangey or very tempo-y or aggressive even deck that plays green or black creatures that can make other tokens and then you just tempo your opponent out with like Lily into like Spider. Like you play, I don't know, you play like uh, Jadar on turn two, Lily, Spider, you're sacking their stuff, you can destroy non permanent on four. I, ju I just really like effects like this. It reminds me of like Finding the Old Gods, which was a really fun saga to play with uh, when it came out. And this seems to be like it's... It seems to be its creature counterpart to some extent, and I, and I really do enjoy it. So yeah, that'll do it for Skyfish Spider. Uh, next up, we have Soul Partition. So that's uh, number seven. Soul Partition is... A really cool instant in my opinion I, I absolutely love it I, I think I think a card like this is just gonna be a lot of fun to experiment with so what it does it's two mana it's a white instant and it exiles target non land permanent and for as long as that card remains exiled its owner may play it but a spell cast by an opponent this way costs two more to cast so you can think about it kind of like uh, you remember a uh, spellbinder the 3-1 flyer that taxes your opponent's card in hand. Except this is not a creature, obviously. But it's also a 2-mana instant. So what you can do with this is... It's a tempo card. So basically... Well, it can be used as a tempo card. So basically, you can use it on your opponent's non on permanent and temporarily remove it from play. And then they have to recast it for 2 more. So for example, if you're playing like a Thalia Peacekeeper deck that taxes your opponent naturally... Um, and for example, let's say you have a Peacekeeper on turn 3, you tax something, they play it, and then you Soul Partition it, that's going to cost 4 more, right? Because you still have Peacekeeper, and 
your soul partition adds two to the cost again. So it's essentially like a removal spell for most tempo decks because, you know, at some point when it gets too late in the game, you're probably going to lose the game as that kind of deck, right? But I, I really like it in that specific archetype. But also, I feel like this could be used in some kind of control deck or maybe some kind of value deck that cares about tempoing your opponent, um, out tempoing its opponent or swing or hitting like a huge tempo swing. So for example, the fact that you can use this defensively, your opponent targets one of your creatures, for example, with like a removal spell and you use this, it essentially just balances the card back to your hand. So that's that flexibility. It could be used defensively and offensively. I feel like that flexibility just makes it really appealing. I, I love spells like this. I really like versatile spells that don't feel extremely broken, but have like pretty powerful usage across the board, whether you're using it defensively or offensively. So yeah, there's Soul Partition. Next up, we have Blade Coil Serpent. I, I don't really know what to say about this card. It's, it's just, it's a lot. And it's really cool. I've never played with cards like this yet, where you have a colorless card that uses colored mana to add effects to it. So for example, in mono blue, well, I guess I can go through what it does. So okay, so if you spend two blue for each two blue that you spent to cast this. So for example, if you want to cast it for six, you spend six blue, you draw three cards. So for each two blue, you draw a card. For black, for each two black, each opponent discards a card. And for each two red, it gets plus one plus so trample and haste until end of turn. So this gives it a ton of flexibility in those colors. And what's what's cooler about this is that it has X in the cost, which means that you can also add to its mana cost. So for example, if you're on eight mana, you can spend an extra two of any of whatever color you choose that's relevant here. So for example, let's say you have eight blue and you're drawing four cards. I feel like that's super cool and for a six mana five four, that's totally reasonable. I, ju I just really like the card. I don't necessarily think it's going to be that strong unless it's in kind of red aggro deck. Maybe that needs to do. I feel like the trample and haste is probably the most relevant. Maybe it doesn't even have to be a mono red deck. It could be like a Grixis deck. You just have to spend two blue really to get the to get the most powerful effect for the amount of colored mana. It's just two red, like the plus up also and trample and haste. You only need to trample and haste once for it to be valuable, right? For example, in Grixis, you could have like a draw two plus haste six four. I like it. I mean, I don't know if it's that powerful, but I just think this kind of card design is very cool. And I hope it sees some amount of play. Well, at least I will certainly I will certainly try to play it. <laughs> All right, up next, we have Brotherhood's End. And I really like red sweepers that deal with planeswalkers because I feel like planeswalkers are such a strong, strong permanent, uh, permanent or card type that they need some form of answer that doesn't feel like you're automatically losing value. So, for example, if you spot remove a planeswalker, it'll already have affected the battlefield or the game in some way, right? Like drawing a card or something. So having a card that could potentially deal with like Liliana when it after it minus and they have like another creature and you can deal with the basically the rest of Lily plus that creature, I feel like that's fantastic because then you're not actually losing card advantage. You're going two for two, for example, if they sacrifice one of your creatures. But what I love about this card is again the flexibility. I love flexibility. So destroy all artifacts with mana value three or less for three mana in red. I feel like that's a fantastic way to give some form of counterplay to the amount of artifacts that are, that are coming in the set. So we have a lot of aggressive soldiers, for example, the, the three damage is going to be relevant there, three damage to each creature and plane walker. And then you have the destroy all artifacts with mana value three or less, which, which is going to be fantastic flexibility for decks that might explore that archetype. So I don't know, there's not that much to say about it. I just really like the card. I, I really think I'm going to be playing with this in, in control decks and maybe not even in control decks, maybe just as a sideboard card in red decks, just to deal with artifacts, for example, if those become a problem. I don't know, I really like it. I feel like it's a, it's a really cool card. All right, the next thing we're going to look at 
and this is I, I didn't I like all the meld cards let's just say that each meld card I enjoy a lot I feel like the mechanics are really cool I've not played with it uh in my magic journey so I'm really excited to explore those and I couldn't really pick one of them so I'm just gonna put all three I'm just gonna say that the meld cards together as a bunch I'm really excited to play with and um they're all really cool they all do something different it was too hard to decide i know this might feel like a little, a little bit like cheating but i'm just gonna put all of them in this position and i think that is four so yeah it'd be the no fifth yeah they're rank five in terms of how excited i am to play with them all right but this card so now, from now, above the meld cards, we have cards I'm really excited to play with. And first up, we have Fade from History. I feel like... Well, first of all, the art is incredible. I love the bears. Uh, I feel like this card... it It's striking. Like, you look at the art, and you, you like the card already, you know what I mean? <laughs> So Fade from Mystery is a 4-mana green sorcery. And each player controls an artifact or enchantment creates a 2-2 bear token. And then you destroy all artifacts and enchantments. So it's like a, a huge sweeper for artifacts and enchantments. And the small drawback of just making a 2-2 I think is fantastic. This gives green huge, huge, huge power against all of those that tribal artifact decks or enchantment decks, all of those archetypes that are going to really lean in to that kind of strategy, green has an answer to that. And I feel like that's that's really good. We we definitely need some counterplay to that just in case it becomes too strong. And having this card in a format is just fantastic in green, I feel, I feel like. So I don't know, I guess maybe I just like it a lot because of the art. <laughs> I don't know, but I also think the effect is really cool and really strong. So, yeah, there's Fade from Mystery. Up next, at rank 3, we have Portal to Phyrexia. Big artifact, biggest artifact, maybe. Well, probably not the biggest. But 9 mana. When Portal, Phyrexia, when Portal to Phyrexia enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices 3 creature. 3 creatures. At the beginning of your upkeep, put target creature from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It's a Phyrexian in addition to its other types. Now, what I like about this set is that we are getting ways to bring back artifacts and enchantments from the graveyard to the battlefield. And what I'm thinking of specifically is the white, the white sorcery, 5 mana white sorcery that can bring back an artifact or an enchantment from the graveyard to the battlefield. So, obviously for 9 mana, this card is not very good, right? Maybe it's okay. But you're not getting to 9 mana without losing the game most times. So you want to cheat this out. And for 5 mana, your opponent sacrifices 3 creatures. That's already very strong. Because we, ha we have effects like that. Let's say there's a white sweeper that you can sack as many creatures as you want from each side, right? But like, how many do you need to sack for it to be valuable at 5 mana? I would say, honestly, three. I would say three. And on average, if you're controlling the game a little bit before that, they probably will have less than three, to be fair. If you're playing a deck that's trying to get this out, or maybe you play less removal and play more ways to try to dig to this with, like, uh, with looting and stuff like that. But either way, sacrificing three creatures for five mana, that's a bargain. But then it's also a threat on your next upkeep. And starting from there, it snowballs, right? So, I don't know. First of all, the art is fantastic. Let's just talk about that. And then the effect is really powerful, really cool. And I'm really excited to try to cheat this out in turn five and just hopefully do good things with it. If it gets destroyed, you still get the sacrifice effect, right? That's what I like about this, is that it doesn't feel like your opponent deals with it it's that much of a problem. All right, rank two, you're going to see a trend here. Is one with a multiverse. <laughs> Big blue enchantment. Eight mana. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. 
You may play lands and cast spells from the top of your library. And once during each of your turns, you may cast a spell from your hand or the top of your library without paying its mana cost. So kind of close to Omniscience in what it does. Except Omni Omniscience lets you cast your entire hand for free. But this is better in the long game because you can cast... You, you basically have infinite card draw until you hit two lands in a row, obviously. But you can cast anything from the top of your deck until you hit two lands. And you also get to, hit, to cast one spell for free. The important thing here is that Casting one spell for free is usually enough. You're not going to dominate the game, but it's enough to stabilize you. And that's very, that's very important because this card is more of like a, a card advantage spell in the end. It's a, it's, it's not that much tempo because you're spending, you're spending, well, in my case, I'm trying to cheat this out on turn five with the same spell I was talking about earlier. But let's say on eight mana, you cast this and you cast Farewell or something. You're not really out tempoing your opponent there because you spent two extra mana you get one spell for free but you had to cast one multi-risk but when you untap if this doesn't get destroyed it's incredible so the question is can you untap with this i think it's gonna be difficult but you can build your deck in a way i think where potentially you can stall until something like turn seven and then hold up a counter spell or something like that and once you have that set up well then you win the game right as long as you're not dying on the immediate turn after you cast this. So there's going to be a lot of deck building required to make this work, and I, I, that's, I love that. I love deck building around these big, uh, expensive spells that can potentially dominate the game. It, it's really exciting. I don't know if it's going to be good. Probably not, because we have ways to deal with enchantments and artifacts. Same thing with Portal, right? We have ways to deal with it, so this kind of strategy probably won't be viable. But I, I like the... I, I just like thinking about deck building this and what it's going to look like. And it'll be fun while it lasts, unless I just win no matches with it. <laughs> Who knows? All right, let's move on to my favorite card from the set. Maybe unexpected, maybe not. The coolest card advantage spell I've ever seen um, in my, what, three, four years playing Magic? It's not a long time. The Hostile Negotiations. It's a 4-mana black instant. And you exile the top 3 cards of your library in a face-down pile. And then you exile the top 3 cards of your library again in another face-down pile. You get to look at the cards in each pile. And then turn a pile of your choice face up. An opponent chooses one of those piles, puts that pile into your hand, and the other into the graveyard. You lose 3 life. Okay, that was a lot of text, right? So essentially... You exile six cards. The first three go into one pile. Second three go into another pile. Reveal one. Pass them over to your opponent. They choose. So they can't see the pile that's face down, obviously. They see the pile that's face up. They choose which pile you draw. The rest goes in your graveyard, which is great. That's what makes this card so good. Is that the cards that are not picked go in the graveyard. Fantastic. So you have synergy with that, potentially if you build your deck correctly around that. You're losing three life, which is a very reasonable price to pay. I feel like that it, it hurts. It hurts. It definitely hurts. But you can build your deck, kind of mitigate that effect. Because four mana draw three is incredible. And this is better than that because you're getting three cards in your graveyard. And also you might get the better pile too. It, I just, I, I love, I love this card. Oh my God, I love these effects. Like Atris was a 3-2. Uh, Demir creature that essentially did the, th the same thing with the top three cards of your library, but your opponent separates the piles and you pick one. And I love that. I love effects that are cooperative effects in a way where both players have a decision to make. And that decision is very impactful because it, it, it decides which cards one of them is going to be going to have in hand, right? So that's really important. I, I love it. I just, ah, I just love this kind of design. I feel like this is exactly what I want out of card games. Like the, the mind game, the mind game of of like, did I bait you with a pile that looks strong, but the other one that's face down is stronger. So you're going to pick the other one, but actually it was weaker. You know, it's like, <laughs> I just love it. I love it so much. 
these kind of effects just make me so happy and I love to play with them. I'm really excited to play with this one because I feel like as long as you have life gain in your deck, you can mitigate the loss of three life and then it's just draw three cards, right? And then maybe you have graveyard synergy. Oh, I, just, I, I love it so much. Everything about it. First of all, well, there's that. And then the artwork is also fantastic. The, the artwork is beautiful. The, the explosion, the colors, the green explosion, the yellow explosion behind that. Like, I, I, I love, and, and even the flavor, hostile negotiations, right? So you lose the three life because it's so, it, it's uh, it's an aggressive negotiation, right? Like, so well, you're both losing things in that bout, in the, in that decision, right? Even the player who's gaining in the end still loses something. It, it's so good. Everything about it is fantastic. I, I don't really know. I think I'm, I'm kind of looping now. We've, we've pretty much gone through everything, right? I don't know if I forgot anything else I wanted to gush about this card. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, that's gonna do it. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick top 10 of the cards I'm most excited to play with. Or my favorite cards. Just from looking at them. From the set. And if you did enjoy and you're still watching, please don't forget to uh, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really does help out. You can follow me on Twitch to watch me live. Link in the description. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.